Okay, welcome to our Division H uh, Pathway 63 Masterclass. My name is Aaron. I'm the current Division H Director in District 89118 and also a District Officer in Speechcraft in District 67. Now, it's my honor to be presenting this Masterclass series because we think that there is a need for everyone to really understand how to utilize the halfway tools and making sure that you can get some tips and advice from us from different perspectives so that you can enhance this usage and help to apply to your real life aspects. Today, we're going to have quite a very wonderful session because we have our lovely host, which I've been inviting for the past few weeks and months. We have Crystal, who is our lovely girl there. You can see she's very pretty, make up everything there. Uh, she's going to be a host for today. Uh, she's also part of our uh, Pathway 63 Masterclass team. Not just that, we are also having some demo speakers and evaluation so that you will see how it goes for every project. So before we begin, just a reminder, today's class will focus on introduction to Toastmaster mentoring and anyone know what the next topic is? Ophelia, please. Time management. Okay, <laughs> managing time. Okay, it's a different way of approaching managing time. Okay, so first of all, let's welcome Crystal up the stage to introduce whoever is going to be in the list for us. Okay, let's welcome Crystal. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Clear? Okay. Yeah. Hello, everyone. This is Crystal, the assistant to Erin, our division director. I'm so happy to have you all in the meeting tonight. And first, I want to introduce our agenda for you. First, we will have the introduction of the past week. Oh, sorry. First, we will divide our tonight's meeting to two parts. The first part is about introduction of mentoring. And second one is about time management. For each part, we will have the introduction for the past week first. We'll lead by our director, Erin. And then we will have our senior Toastmasters to give the demo speech. Then we will have another senior Toastmaster to evaluate the prepared speech. Next, I will host the panel discussion roundtable. Everyone can ask a question about each about past week or about how to prepare speech. Then we will, I will invite Erin to give the closing. Okay, so clear about nice agenda? Yeah, okay. Yeah, let's start. First, let's, uh, we will start about the introduction of mentoring. We will uh, have our Erin to give the introduction of mentoring. Thank you very much, Crystal. Now, the main point mm -hmm. about today's topic related to introduction to mentoring is that the project is actually really designed with two key purposes. Now, for those of you who know about Toastmasters for a long time, how old is Toastmaster by now? Anyone knows how long or how old Toastmaster? Please, Elizabeth, please, uh, I'm yourself. Or type your answer. Um, to Toastmasters would be 96 years old on Thursday, the 22nd of October. Thank you very much. Excellent answer. You may get a chocolate from me and, and deliver it soon. Uh, next year for convention, <laughs> I'll give it to you. So we have 90-ish years of history for Toastmasters. Now, Toastmasters success is based on three things. One, it has a catchy slogan where leaders are made. Two, there is a power whereby members are sharing their success to different people. You see that that's a legacy whereby members training new members to be successful individuals in the society. Now, this is the aspect whereby the public speaking skills and leadership is passed from generation to generation, and it cannot be gone without this element of mentoring. Now, obviously, the last one that makes Toastmasters successful is a recognized body that every country and every member feels there is a need to. So I'm just going to focus on point number two for today, which is mainly about the success, the legacy. Now, this project, Introduction to Toastmaster Mentoring, actually have two key purposes. Now, if you download the manual from Toastmaster International, the manual actually is looking something like this. You will have a PDF document of the Introduction to Toastmastering. Now, in this project itself, I'm going to zoom in and make it bigger for everyone to see. Last time, there were some suggestions for it. You can see that it's actually focused on a couple of competence skills. First of all, actually letting members understand 
the definition, purpose, and benefits of mentoring and virtual mentoring, and also letting us see the successful attributes and also effective mentors so that we can learn the skill set and how we can actually master the skills and pass it on to the next Toastmaster that we come across. We also need to know the definition, purpose, and benefits of a project. Now, for those of you who do not know what a project means, project means that it's like a, a different terms of a mentee. But in new Toastmaster system, pathway system, it focus on the word protege. It's a replacement word for mentee. Now, finally, the last one, which is a common concept that many people might be confused, and this project actually tells you a lot of things about it, is that it recognizes the difference between coaching and mentoring. Now, these two elements are very important because to this very day, there might be still members who will be confused. What is a coach and what is a mentor? So let's look at it even further when we go down the road. Now, <clears throat> for every menu, please read it very carefully. Take your time. It can be read from a base camp or you can download into PDF file. Now for this, it actually introduced what, how to become a mentor. You have to be a member of good standing. Those are mainly for pathways mentor program. Okay, this actually allows you to understand about the program, which is an optional path. But that's not the focus of today's project. Today's project actually focus on identifying just those four elements. Now, first of all, we have something called traits of a successful mentor. Let me do a role poll for everyone. How many of you have a mentor now? Now, please raise up your hand if you do have a mentor. Okay. Can anyone share with me some of the successful traits that you define this mentor is a good one for you? Uh, maybe I will listen to Frank first. Frank. <clears throat> the most important thing for me, uh, for my mentor, is they listen to me and and uh, respond back to what I say. Great. That, that's important. So attentive and listening skills. Now, next, uh, Ophelia, do you have any to point out about a successful or good mentor? A good mentor, he is going to he's going to provide advice based on his personal experience and also his and also being a really wise person who know uh, who knows a lot of things. Mm, thank you very much, Ophelia. So it has to be someone that's very knowledgeable. Otherwise, you cannot teach anyone. How about Richard? Hello, Richard. Are you there? Would you like to share some of your thoughts of what that's yeah, a good mentor? Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, thank you. Uh, I think as a mentor, the uh, uh, mentor should be a knowledgeable, uh, just like. Uh, 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 I mute yourself. You click your button wrong way. <laughs> Hello? Yep, back. Hearing you right now. Okay, okay. Uh, <clears throat> okay. So one of the qualities they, of the mentor, I think it should be uh, uh, keep more uh, pay, 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 patience and uh, he can uh, lead the uh, students or new members uh, along the whole the projects. And he don't like a teacher. Teacher just uh, uh, tell all the uh, knowledge and the uh, make some uh, since uh, place some uh, homework to the students but the mentors is just a uh, uh, teacher uh, the new members uh, by doing the projects and by his uh, 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 his uh, job or by his work uh, uh, by his own work of what he did to lead the, to show the uh, new uh, flash or the new team how to do it so uh, this is what I think the mental is, mental is. Thank you, Richard. No worries. There's no right or wrong Thank answer. You. It's more like really a personal opinions in there. Now, let's go back to this manual first. In any kind of mentor, they actually is kind of classified into three different key categories. The first one is being experienced and knowledgeable. What do you mean by being experienced and knowledgeable? You have to know about your pathways, the manuals itself, your projects to guide them to know how to do each project. Just like what we are doing right now, the masterclass. We want you to actually learn about how to use that path. How do you utilize this project? That person must have wisdom. 
it's, there's no one fixed answer. There are different kinds of answers within one project itself, and it's about different approach. Next, we also have an informed perspective, meaning that you can be very neutral and really give different advice. Okay, if a mentor wants, if a mentee wants to do this project, how would you advise this person to take it? You have to be very nice, like saying that, okay, you can actually got it from your own personal experience, your grandpa, your dad, maybe that person is a mentor to you, or maybe your friends, your peers who are inspirational models, they can be mentored too, etc. There are different ways of expressing it. Now, not just that, we also have something called the positivity. You do not want someone that's negative. Okay, you want someone that's very positive and very supportive. Now, in terms of that, being positive actually motivates the member even more. So these are some criteria whereby you can add to your introduction to Toastmaster mentoring speech. And remember, time is of essence. Sometimes mentors, like even me, I don't have much time for my mentees, but sometimes when you actually look at them, you have to still maintain a respectful and a caring posture. We try to focus our time wisely, but see how it goes. Now, does it bring someone to your mind right now? When I say this, do you have someone that is inspirational or as a mentor to you? That person that brings you to Toastmaster, that person that inspires you to be a great speaker, those are kind of mentors to you. Now, those experience can be a part of your speech in doing this project. Now, when we look further on, please take your time to read it. I'm going to highlight only the really key aspect. One of the things I think mentor might really need to have is really being committed. When you promise someone or when you do something, when you say you have a mentee, follow it through. Don't let the mentee get disappointed because that person may be disappointed forever if you don't care about it. Now, here is whereby the mentor actually explains more for your understanding. It really helps on a two ways benefit, not just mentoring helps the member or project, it also helps you in terms of active listening skills and also communication skills. In Toastmasters, we focus on three elements. One, public speaking skills. Two, leadership, uh, leadership skills. And finally, the last one is communication skills. This is actually focusing more on communication skills. Now, after you get all this experience, you think about someone that you want to talk about then you might want to go and talk about this speech, create like, okay, why is he a mentor to you? How does he help you? Show some examples. And maybe that's a good one or maybe that's a bad one. Don't worry. Those are challenges for you to improve yourself. Don't worry whether a mentor is good or bad, but that person helps you to understand a lifelong lesson. Now, there are different benefits as well, like Technology for communication, create a global community whereby you are being someone inspirational to different people. You're also being a mentor to someone else too. Now, bring a mentee, everyone actually misunderstood a bit of things. They expect a lot of great things about from a mentor. But being a protege or a mentee, you also need to be, you also need to be fulfilling these criteria. You need to open up to new feedbacks, be willingness to learn accepting like guidance, etc. Because if they don't listen as a mentee or project, then technically speaking, they are not learning anything. So reading this menu allows you to understand your role as a project if you want to find a mentor or your role as a mentor if you're guiding someone or your role in your life lesson that you have been guided or directed to. So there are three different ways whereby you can approach it. There might be a fourth method too. Now, moving on, uh, this is a, a slide that I have to highlight, is that another highlight of what differentiates a coaching and mentoring and really need everyone's attention to, because this project allows you to understand the difference between coaching and mentoring. In short, these are the differences, short-term versus long-term, meeting a goal and meeting goals, specific feedback to a generalization feedback, skill specific or more personal wise? Is it motivational or is it just skill technical basis? Directions versus, it's depending on which side, the coach or the project. So we are focusing on mentoring today. So it's more on the project, the mentee, they want to actually set a goal for themselves. And mentoring actually helps to really guide it through. And also project determines, not the coach. 
okay? And finally, after you finish this assignment, you'll be actually doing a lot of different checklists, such as, for example, what the objective of the speech is, is talking about present a five to seven minute speech about a time when you were a project or when you are a mentee and share the importance of having mentors. So remember that practice stimulation that we have, do you remember someone that is important and help you guide your way through in life? This person can be a mentor. So remember this incident or the sh stories, share it out. Now, this is a very important self-reflective uh, pose or rather saying a speech in this entire series of pathways because this is a required project. Every path have this project. We want to highlight the importance of mentoring so that people can learn and master the craft of communication and active listening skills. Now, this is only short for mainly about introduction to Toastmaster mentoring. Hopefully everyone understand a bit of how to approach it. Now, I'm gonna do a stimulation whereby we have a demo speaker for today, Sandy. So I would like Crystal to introduce Sandy out, although I should be, but let, let Crystal do it. Okay. Unmute yourself. Yeah, thank you, Aaron. Thanks for your detailed introduction of mentoring program. Actually, I have passed that pathway, but I think I'm not very, I'm not so clearly about that pathway. Only after your introduction, I think I, I maybe I need to prepare for my speech again. <laughs> okay, so next, next we will have a, uh, we will have our guest to give the demo speech. Uh, her, her name is Sandy. Sandy from Taiwan, right? Yep. Hi, Sandy. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to um, meet you. So, so, yeah, okay. I saw you. So, uh, next, I will give, give the stage to you, please. Okay, um, before I start, I will share my screen and also could I have timer to also uh, show me the time? Okay, is it okay? Sure, the timing yes. for this project is five to seven minutes. Yeah, five to seven minutes. It's okay, I will go. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Well, felicitations, Master. Uh, do you have goals in it, goals in it as a master in your life? What do you do about it? Well, for me, this is my 11th year in the Toastmaster, and I do have a dream. My dream is actually to be a trainer and a better speaker. But the past 11 years, I didn't have a trainer. I didn't have a mentor in my life, actually. So I was kind of like staying in where I belong. So I don't know how to do it. Now, it was actually till this year, I actually met a mentor in my life and I dramatically changed my life in the Toastmaster and I dramatically changed the way I moved towards my goal actually. So for me, uh, the mentor and mentee relationship is the most valuable relationship in the Toastmaster. It's actually how I believe. Do you believe so? Well, well I, I believe so, why? Well, I believe so. So mentor and mentee relationship will be actually, mentor is somebody that I have been to some area that I have been to. And two, he can help me to solve the problem. And the most important thing is that he is willing to help me and guide me uh, towards my goal. Like I mentioned, my goal in the master is to be a trainer. But the past 11 years, I'm, actually, I wasn't so sure how to do it actually. So earlier this year, I met my mentor, actually helped me to finish my goal, and I moved dramatically towards my goal. But the problem is, where is it? Or where do I find my mentor, actually? I actually have no idea until these things happen. Well, earlier in this March, that we all forced to go online, so I joined a couple of online contests and online training. So when there was a training here, trainer here, I, that time I was thinking, oh my God, uh, this is a young gentleman that was giving two hours of workshop and everybody was listening. And the way he can do things was quick and 
all the things went through him was easy and simpler just for me to do. For me, he has the everything that to be to be a professional trainer. So he kind of like, for me, it's like a, a start in my Toastmaster life. So I actually wanted to know how he did it, how he become a professional trainer. But that time, I wasn't so sure if he would take me as a mentee. So I wasn't so sure about that. I didn't really know him. And after a couple of chats uh, through the FBs, luckily, he accepted me as a mentee. That day was the April Fool's Day, actually. April Fool's Day that my mentor attacked me as my mentee. It was actually the most important day in my life because I was happy because I asked a story to be my mentor and he said yes to me. So the first stage between mentor and mentorship was actually happy. Happy for me it was first one. It was happy I chased a star and I grabbed the star. It was the first stage. Then it moved on to the second stage. It was not that happy. The second stage, I actually call it gap, G-A-P, gap. How to bridge the gap when I work with a better trainer and how I bridge the gap when I wanted to uh, bridge the gap between an amateur trainer or a professional speaker. Well, as you can see, uh, there are two photos. It was just like before, before I knew my mentor and after I worked with my mentor. These two photos speak before and after. Uh, in May, this was my first online training. As you can see, uh, incompetent, um, uncontrollable, and I was not even looking at the camera. So for that, that time, it was a painful experience to deliver my uh, online training that time in May. So I wasn't so sure and I was not knowing what to do. But in four months later, in just September, I was able to control and conduct the different speeches or workshop online. As you can see, my face shows that I could control and I was happier and I was uh, showing that I was happy and uh, competent to become a speaker or trainer. The second stage actually is painful for me. There's also one thing. What, what kind of thing that is what painful for me would be? Actually, my trainer is here. Actually, we live in the different cities. So basically, we cannot really see each other. So the only connection for me is would be a phone call or a Zoom meeting like right now. But at the early stage, I was not able to reach him or I wasn't so sure that I could reach him and ask him to give me 30 minutes of phone call or something. So I need to record my uh, video to him. It was easy for most people, but it was just not that easy for me because I was resistant to really record myself just like this. I didn't want to see myself and I didn't want to hear myself. So for the entire month of the June and July, actually, I couldn't give my homework to my mentor. And you might think how I survived or how I survived when I was in September in like this, this was actually uh, my mentor stepped in to ask me to go directly to the men, uh, a Zoom meeting. What kind of Zoom meeting? It was like he asked me the three questions that made me become the September one. One would be, he asked me, Sandy, why I was resistant to recording myself. And two, we could do it together when we were in the Zoom meeting. And third would be, just don't blame yourself for not trying this. So all the three sentences actually from my mentor when we were doing the Zoom mentoring something. So those three sentences were powerful for me because for, for me it would be, I didn't really want to move. I didn't want it to record myself. Although my goal is to be a professional trainer. I have something that I don't want to do. So my mentor helped me by asking me questions and made me think about what I want and how much I wanted to do and move on to the third stage actually. The third stage of the mentorship would be I come to overcome this and then I become this more aware of knowing how to do training. And the third stage of this would be actually we work together to conduct different training and different level. 
So luckily for me, we'll be, we were working on this for Taiwan for this 267 together. So for me, my life without my mentor the past six months won't help me who I am today. So I really thank him for helping me to conduct all the things and that we still have in the past. So thank you very much. I won't be here without you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy. Yeah. I feel like I feel like the power of mentoring, actually. I'm so happy for you to have this mentoring in your life. And I also also remind me for my mentor mentor. So yeah. Okay. So next, uh let's invite Ivan. Ivan, are you here? Uh, I will take over. Yep, I'm here. Uh, Ivan, do you catch everything from what Sandy? No, I need catch second yeah. half. <laughs> so maybe I will I will cover the first half, then you cover the second half. How is it? Can can I, I will cover the delivery. Okay, so I'll I'll help Ivan for a bit. So we have two evaluators for today for Sandy. Okay. Now, first of all, uh yeah, uh Ophelia, you'll be helping in the panelists, don't worry. But now uh the part about evaluation. Actually, mm -hmm. you have three evaluators. Ophelia actually helps me to keep a track of what you say. So you have three evaluators. Everyone, one minute, okay? Let's have some fun. So first, first one minute starts from me. I will throw the ball to Ophelia, and then Ophelia throw the ball to Ivan. Um, for Sandy, uh, is a really great speech for today uh, on introduction to Toastmaster mentoring. So let's give a round of applause for uh, for Sandy for achieving this objective first. Okay. As an evaluator, we actually look from the pathways manuals, which is still very important because we have to look at the evaluation form. So for me, we need to learn that it does Sandy really envisions or define how Toastmasters really envisions mentoring and also share some aspects of a project. So she did. She actually shared a bit of the stories of how she changed from before and after and actually look at the point system whereby I look at the bottom part. In terms of clarity wise, excellent, uh, because I can hear her wordings. Vocal variety, kind of okay. I can suggest that there can be some changes because I would like to have some sort of discussion. Remember the moments whereby you're saying you're talking to your mentor? Now, I would like to hear those exchanges like, are you free, mentor? No, I'm not free. Are you free? No, I'm not. So you can actually show the examples of that. And in that way, you can actually create the visualizations of what do you mean by that, the, the kind of sad situation? So in terms of instruction to Toastmaster mentoring, it's not just about the positive aspect, but it also can be some challenge point. Now I will throw the ball to Ophelia to continue from what I say. Let's continue on. Now, so Aaron mentioned that this that Sandy ha, uh, has done really well on delivering, uh, on talking about the mentorship, on talking about her mentorship experience and i was also surprised that i was also surprised that i've learned some more things about mentor about mentors apart from being being the inspiration for yourself as well as changing yourself to a from to a better person there's another new thing that that we haven't explored or haven't imagined that is Mentorship has no boundaries. And this is this is such a surprising this is such a surprising point and it's innovative, especially especially in the midst of a pandemic when when the in, uh, when we have the increased use of social media of social media, Zoom or other video chat platforms, it's easier for us to conduct member mentorship from a distance. This is a really this is a really inspir inspiring point, and it also re and it also reminds me uh, and it, rem it also reminds me on how to on how to on how to on how to approach my my mentor in real life, and I would like to give a suggestion to you as well. So in terms so uh, when Aaron mentioned that. That you could that you could slip some scenes of some scenes of confusion and sadness to increase to increase the 
uh, the interest and also and also the dramaticness of the speech. I also I also noticed that your intonation in uh, in the speech is a little bit flat. Uh, it isn't dramatic enough to present to present a story to enough uh, to to the audience. So I would like to suggest that you can try to you can try to lift you can try to add some intonation add some emotions in your speech as well so i'll i'll pass the ball to our next evaluator ivan sorry i'm outside uh can you hear me clearly yep no, okay yes can because because i missed the con uh earlier part so i will basically evaluate based on the body language and the gesture used Basically, uh, I think although it's a Zoom meeting, but we still have to acknowledge that it's still a public speaking. Uh, no matter it's online or offline, the gesture is very important because I barely see any gesture from Sandy just now. Um, that is one point. Okay, then the second point is uh, the virtual aid. Is it necessary to leave it there so long? Because end of the day, we are not looking at the vir uh, virtual aid. We are looking at the speaker itself and the content. So maybe you show us a bit of the virtual aid and then after that, uh, just off it and continue with your speech. I think that would be a better because what we want is to listen to the speaker, not looking at the PowerPoint. But I, I feel that your eye contact is very good because the whole, uh, from the time I come in, I see the presentation, the whole eye contact, you see that you're looking at us and talking to us, although you are just looking at the, maybe the camera pit hole, but I think this is a very good point that you have taken note of. Um, but overall, I would feel that uh, if you could, you challenge yourself, make some speak, Standing, like you see, although I'm doing evaluation now, I'm also standing and some of my gesture, although it may be excessive, but gesture, uh, you need to control. So there's some of the gesture when you need to emphasize on something, it will enhance on your speech. Because the content is very important, but, but the delivery of the content is even more important. Thank you, back to, back to you. Thank you, Ivan. Thank you. Yes, thanks for our three evaluators tonight. I think it's, a, <laughs> it's special for, for, for Sandy to have three evaluators tonight. Okay, next, uh, when I look at the chat box, I can some of you can cannot wait for ask questions, right? Yeah, some of them ask questions during uh, in the chat box. So next, we will have the Panel discussion. So, so could I ask the first question before the meeting? Someone sent me a question about about how to be a good man mentor because I think this. This one, uh, she is a very fresh mentor, and she thinks she's not very qualified for the for being a mentor. So, I have the question for how to become a senior mentor or how to mentor others when we are the first mentor. So, our guest, could you please? Answer, are you clear about my question? Okay, yeah. Like one, you know. <laughs> so, so Ophelia, <laughs> do you have the answer about this question? Uh, so what I, what I think uh, is that what I would suggest is that perhaps you can uh, perhaps you can start mentoring your mentee or protege with your experience. That's also how I that's also how I mentor my mentor my successor uh, who is going who 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 would be taking up my my leadership position in one of my Toastmasters club I I'm in. Uh, when I when I have to leave the job for graduate for graduation and my and my work for 
for area for the area director. I uh, at that time not only not only I prepare her for the job for the job uh, for the job she's going to face, but also the thing that. Uh, but also, but also share my stories to her in postmasters uh, to uh, to inspire her on what to do on what to do when they're in when they're they're facing some challenges later. Yeah, agree. Agree. Thanks for your answering. Yeah. So I hope I hope. She can listen to the answers and benefit for her to be a uh, an experienced mentor in the future. Thank you. So, from the chat box, I can see a question from from Vidi. Vidi, right? Vidi, are you here? Are you here? Maybe you so maybe, um, yeah, I can ask on behalf of Billy. He asks, what is a mistake many fresh mentors often make? It's really a good question. So can I invite our another guest? Aaron, can you ans answer this question? So I become a guest or guest certificate. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, um, related to the fresh mentors, right? I think I will consolidate for everyone's in terms of uh, four common mistakes that every single mentor will will not be able to avoid, but try to take note of it. The first mistake that mentor usually make is that they assume that being a mentor is that he is superior to the protege. Now this is a very fundamental mistake. Although the mentor is knowledgeable, that doesn't mean that they are superior. In some way, mentor is actually maintaining on, a, on the same level as a protege or mentee because they are acting as a friend. It's not like you want someone that is like being, being superior to you, always talk to you like this is always correct. No, a mentor is always there to be as a support, walking together in the shoes of the protege. So the first mistake that many people will definitely make or cannot avoid is that they always think they are better. Don't think that they are better. There's something that the project may be better than you that you don't know, okay? Now, point number two for, men, uh, for common mistakes, what I was saying. The second one that many people might make in terms of being a fresh mentor is that they always assume that they are correct. Now, this is a very automatic assumption when they always think that they are always correct, then the project will have only one way of learning, just one direction. Now, in terms of that, I would suggest that for all mentors, please think from the power of free perspective. Always give three different options for them to choose from. Never give only one. Give free. Give different points of views because these views are just recommendations, suggestions. They are not absolutely imposed onto a project. The project was like, let me think about it from a free possible option. Maybe there's a fourth option that I can pick. Always give choices. Don't assume that your methods is always right. So that's a very important point for a mentor. Don't make yourself think that you're always correct in everything you do. There might be new answers too. Now the third common mistake that mentors do make as a fresh mentor uh, is that they, they will always think about just stepping in without listening, I have to highlight the point, without listening to what the mentee wants. Remember our, our analysis just now about introduction to Toastmaster mentoring? Who decides the direction? The mentor or the project? It's not the mentor, it's the, it's the project, okay? The project actually gives a kind of like a direction, like I want to achieve my goals as a great public speaker. I want to win the world champion. Now the mentor will get that through. We'll think about different plans. But the thing is that it's the mentee or the project will decide on them. So always listen. Mentors, successful fresh mentors always fail to listen to what the expectation is. And finally, in the end for mentee, they will actually lose a lot of interest or motivation because they don't have a listener to that. 
Now, the last one that I think is very important for any fresh mentors, they always make it, uh, is that they are always not there. Now, when I say always not there, time. Now, why do I highlight a point about time is that when the mentee or project, why do I actually have to say these two words is because pathway is says project, mentees, traditional program. So they are kind of literally the same thing. But when you go to, when the mentee or project go to do a speech, now the importance of a mentor has to be there to support the project to do a speech, okay? If you're not there, that's not cost supportive. That person was like, I'm doing a speech, but my, my mentor is not looking at me. Now, how would the mentee feel, okay? So these are the common things that people, fresh mentors will always make because they overlook the feelings of the project. Okay, so these are four. I'll pass the stage back to you, Crystal. Isabel, you want to add something on? Um, yes, I would actually. I, I gave this, I, I actually did my mentoring speech on Thursday and there's a quote I used. I think it sums up what a mentor is. And it's by an American called John C. Crosby. And he said, a mentor is a brain to pick, an ear to listen, and a push in the right direction. And to me, that sums up what a mentor is. As you said, it's not superior to, to you, but they've got a bit more experience and expertise. I think the, the most fundamental gift I think a mentor has is that they listen to you, absolutely listen to you. And then because you sometimes in your comfort zone, they'll give you a gentle push in the right direction and they will support you as needed. So that's my definition of a good mentor. And then that's what I used in my speech. I was doing my, my, my sixth path the other night and that was my sixth mentoring speech. So I use that quote to open my speech with. So those are the three qualities I look for in a mentor. Thank you. Thanks, Elizabeth, for your explaining about the, about the answering of this question. Yeah, I think the quality of how to be a mentor is, is really, yeah. It's good and push to the right direction. I write down this sentence because I think this one will will be we benefit for our fresh mentors when we are being the mentor first. And I know everyone know if we if we finish the past we the, the level two, we can be a mentor, but how to be a qualified one is really important for us to think about. Okay, so uh like I said, time. Time is very important for us and time management is also a good topic and an important pathway for us to discuss. So, so about this, about the intro, introduction of mentoring, anyone has, anyone has another questions about it? No. No. Okay. Oh, I maybe let me that. add on something for the mentoring. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I I saw your question in the chat box. So, could you please ask this? What? What is that a question? Yeah. Uh, so how many years uh, from from our for some member he was asking how many years is considered to be a senior mentor? Yeah. Am I supposed to answer this? No, you can <laughs> you, you can answer it. It's basically a question. <laughs> okay, uh, I think I'm not qualified to answer it because as I'm just a three months postmaster. <laughs> but uh, if you really ask me in my heart, I feel that it's not about the duration. Um, of how long you have been a Toastmaster is about how committed are you as a Toastmaster and uh, how much uh, how much you have gained from being a Toastmaster because mentoring is about a uh, two-way uh, knowledge or wisdom contribution um, you need to have commitment there to the apology or your mentee so if you ask me I'm already I'm three months in my Toastmaster journey I'm already completed my first path. 
I'm really a pathway mentor for my club member because as well as I'm also a VPE. So to me, the duration is not the issue, but it's whether you have the value to contribute as a mentor. And end of the day, what is your objective for being a mentor? Do you want to uh, pass down your wisdom to others or it's just that you want to have something else to follow up in the future? So the, the objective of being a mentor is also very important, not just the duration. I hope this helps. Back to the master of this. Back to the host. Oh, Sandy, you want to add on, right? Yes. Um, for me, if it's a club level, if it's a club level, for example, uh, the junior to his master just entered his master that would need to know basic skill of public speaking or how to survive the first three assignments or how to deliver three speeches, that part would be maybe club officer can be served as a mentor, that part. But for me, it would be I'm I'm 11 years old, uh, experiencing it as master. It would be for me, it would be I go to find my mentor. So I, I I go to find a mentor with the skill that I want, and I ask him or her. I ask him or her for my own goal. But for the, the entry level speaker, my entry level cousin master, they just in a club level. They kind of they cannot pick their own mentor actually. It, it was kind of like the club assigned a senior people, maybe just one year or six months old to them to help them to survive the, the first six months with the three speeches or three assignments. So for me, I, I think it will be different. It's not to say how long or how senior it could be considered senior uh, mentors would be depends on the year in the semester. For junior it would be mentor go to them. For me, senior to myself, I go to find my, my own mentor. So that's my question. But that's my answer. Okay, I think Lillian wants to ask a question, right? Lillian. Lillian, are you there? I remember she wants to ask a question just now. Nope, she's not. I'll pass the stage back to Crystal. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so also time flies. So this section is at the ending and let's start the next part of the time management. As I said before, time management is also very important for us no matter in the life, 